If you clicked this video, this is surely going to pay you. By the end of this video, you'll not only know how to pick the perfect emulator for your needs, you'll also be able to answer all those questions I've been getting from my last video. At last, I'll reveal a secret method that will make your chosen emulator perform at its absolute best on your PC. So stick around, let's get started. First of all, we have BlueStacks 5. BlueStacks 5 is one of the most popular and well-known Android emulators. It performs exceptionally well if your system has 8 to 16 gigabytes of RAM. One great feature of BlueStacks 5 is its Vulkan support, which means it uses your GPU more than your CPU, making everything run smoother. Running on Android 11, BlueStacks 5 lets you play almost any game available on the Play Store. Plus, it's not just for Windows users. There's a Mac OS version too. So, whether you're on a PC or a Mac, if you're into gaming and have a decent setup, BlueStacks 5 is definitely worth a try. Secondly, there is the LD Player 9. If you're looking for an alternative to BlueStacks, this might be the perfect option for you. LD Player 9 runs on Android 9, which may not be the latest version compared to BlueStacks Android 11, but it's still more than enough for running all Android apps. One key difference is that LD Player 9 primarily uses your CPU rather than your GPU making it an excellent choice if you don't have a high-end graphics card. The RAM requirement is the same as BlueStacks. You must have at least 8 gigabytes of RAM to run it. So, if you're tired of BlueStacks or just want to try something new, give LD Player 9 a shot. It could be exactly what you're looking for. Next up, we have Knox Player. If you have a mediocre PC with at least 4 gigabytes of RAM, this can be a great option. One notable feature of Knox is that it also has a macOS version, like BlueStacks. So if your Mac isn't powerful enough to handle BlueStacks, you can try this one too. This runs on Android 9. It also offers a beta version of Android 12. But for now, it's recommended to stick with its Android 9 version. Knox Player provides a seamless experience, suitable for both general use and gaming. However, if you're specifically looking for a gaming-oriented emulator, wait for the next recommendation. In fourth place, we have GameLoop. This emulator is specifically designed for gaming, especially for popular games like PUBG, Mobile, and Free Fire. Almost all Android games are available on it, and it only requires 4 gigabytes of RAM to run smoothly. I personally love this one because I used to play PUBG Mobile using it. So if you're into gaming or want something new, you should definitely try it out. Now keep in mind, this is only recommended for gaming. It does have access to Android apps, but for that purpose, you can try the Nox player. Lastly, we have Moomoo Nebula. This emulator is designed for low-end PCs. Believe me, if you have only 1 GB of RAM on your PC, it will still run smoothly, and with 4 GB of RAM, it just flies like a rocket. Additionally, you don't need to turn on virtualization technology to run this emulator, so it can operate in almost any condition. The only downside is that it is based on Android 7, so it may not support some newer apps and games. But if you still want an emulator with a higher Android version for your low-end PC, check out my this video, it will surely fix your problem. Alright guys, before you leave this video, let me share some crucial tips to optimize your emulator for the best performance. And keep in mind, these settings work for every emulator. First, go to your emulator's properties, then to the Compatibility tab, and enable Run This Program as an Administrator. Secondly, you have to adjust the main settings inside the emulator. In rendering mode, choose OpenGL if you have a powerful graphics card. And if not, go with DirectX. For RAM and CPU cores, use the half-half rule. Allocate half of your system's RAM and cores to the emulator. In the resolution settings, choose the medium setting. If your system is powerful enough to handle, you can opt for a higher one. So these were some crucial settings to improve your emulator's performance. And that's it for this video, my friends. Thanks for watching and I will meet you in the next video.